Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. And as you can see, Art Kirsch and I are with our favorite virtual gourmet, Mr. John Mariani. John, great to see you again. Le bon vivant, le bon vivant, that's me. Oh, merci. Oh, speaking of bon vivants yes. and berets and things, uh, for the last uh, year, we've had some wonderful conversations, but not about your travel. And I'm not talking about virtual travel. You are a virtual gourmet bringing us information about your real life travels throughout the world and the, the, the foods that you've tasted and the wines that, that you've tasted. And you've, you've brought all that back to us and you have a career of that. Uh, but I understand that um, you may no longer be a stay at home if, uh, if I read the papers right. How are you with international travel? Well, I've been waiting, like everybody else, for a year and a half. All of my travel, which has been next to nothing, have been to places where I live in New York, outside of New York, have been to very, very close by places in, in Connecticut and Westchester, and I haven't gotten on any planes in a year and a half. I was hoping to this spring, I had it all planned out, and I was going to go to the Caribbean, and <coughs> COVID put the gabash on it again. So now... Things are getting much better in uh, most countries, although you don't know, know it uh, this past summer in the United States. Um, and France is one of those countries that I love very, very much. If you, if I had to choose any place to spend the rest of my life, it would still be in the United States. But if forced to, I could easily live in not in Paris, not in not in any city in Europe, but in France, especially outside of Paris. And it's open now again. If you have proof of vaccine, you can go to France. They, you do not have to quarantine. Just flash your badge, and they will let you in, and, and your passport, of course. Of course. And they are their arms are welcoming. I mean, let's face it, France uh, is a, a country <clears throat> that is wholly dependent upon on uh, tourism, as is Italy, as is uh, as much of uh, Great Britain. Um, but France particularly, because it is, Paris is the most visited city uh, anywhere in the world outside of New York, which gets about 55 million tourists a year, or used to. <laughs> I don't know what we have this year. Uh, but Paris was right up there. Uh, everybody wants to see Paris. And it is still, and will always be, I hope, the city of lights. It is uh, culturally speaking, style speaking, fashion speaking. Uh, gastronomically speaking, still the capital of those worlds. And um, it's been closed off to us for a year and a half. So I have every intention of going back <clears throat> to eat at my favorite little, uh, the, the, my favorite little bistros, to the places on Montparnasse where, where Hemingway and Dos Passos and the lost generation used to hang out and and uh, drink liquors that I haven't had <laughs> access to in a long time, and um, great platters of seafood and so forth. So I'm looking forward to that, but I'm also looking forward, and it's something that I think that Americans should really consider, is the rest of France. It's a big country. Um, and outside of France, people, I think, I think they know the names of French cities, but they probably haven't been too many of them. You hear it about Marseille because of the uh, <laughs> the French Connection movie, um, and you hear about um, Normandy. And Normandy is something that all Americans should visit. And I'm talking about the Normandy beaches. Uh, Normandy itself is a very rich uh, seaside uh, section of of France. Great, great seafood. Uh, lovely towns uh, on the sea. Uh, but to visit uh, the D-Day invasion site is just, just to take your breath away because you've all seen the footage so many times and yet up front and personal, um, you start to realize not only how bad the carnage must have been, but how dangerous it was to get on those beaches. What shocked me was having seen all the footage 
<clears throat> and the landing craft and the guys getting off. And you saw the Steven Spielberg movie being blown to pieces and they, they get onto the beach and they go further onto the beach and so forth. And the, and the German 88s in the bunkers are pounding, pounding them and so forth. Those beaches were very narrow. I mean, I'm standing on this beach and I'm not, we're not talking about a hundred yards. Uh, now, depending upon it was low tide or, or high tide, it would be more or less. But when, what I'm saying is the, when these guys got on the beach, they were facing those G German 88s. And the bunkers are still there, by the way. It, it was those massive, um, very fearsome-looking, brutish, brutish bunkers that the Germans built are all there, uh, some of them with the guns sticking out. So you have a real uh, visceral uh, sense of what these men went through and, and the rangers who had to climb up uh, 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 palisades uh, to get to the top where waiting for them were Germans. Um, it was more extraordinary when you uh, actually get to see it. The museum is, is at Omaha Beach is so well done. It sets, that was the American beach. Um, I forget which uh, what ones the, the French or the British or the Canadians went to, the other ones, Utah and, and uh, gold and so forth. <clears throat> but uh, but um, and a lot of people will spend days going to each of the beaches because they each have their own story. Um, but So Normandy is, is, should really be second on your list. Um, if you'd like to be cured of any diseases, you could go to Lourdes, um, which is a, a lovely, lovely city. Um, and then there are cities like Rennes, Rennes, R-E-N-N-E-S, which was a medieval city that was bombed by the Germans and almost totally destroyed, but they have rebuilt it so that it looks still like it's back in the Gothic era with all of those timbered houses and so forth that once would burn down very, very easily. And um, Rennes is a beautiful walking city to go through. Um, then there's Champagne. If you like Champagne, go see how it's made. Most of the great Champagne houses have tours. Uh, not only show you how it's made, but take you down into their extraordinary caves, which go on for miles and miles uh, through these tunnels, dusty tunnels. Uh, don't look anything like the ones in uh, in Napa Valley, which are spick and span and clean. And that is really a, a good trip to take. Um, Chartres, Chartres Cathedral um, is considered the greatest of all cathedrals in France, even more so than Notre Dame which is now being rebuilt after the fire. Uh, Chartres is just the, the pinnacle of Gothic architecture in terms of its lightness. And, you know, the, the great thing is throughout Europe, everything's been scrubbed clean. By law, you have to keep your buildings uh, washed so that if you, as I did when I was a teenager or in college, went to France and you saw Notre Dame Cathedral or Chartres Cathedral, it was dark with soot it was gray the paintings also in the museums were covered with covered with dirt and uh, so you see you, you didn't see the beautiful colors that these things actually were you couldn't even see the colors the the glow ruby like colors that the stainless uh, uh, stainless the uh, uh, the windows in these cathedrals uh, glass windows um, how the light used to shine through and but now even walking up to Chartres, and walking into it, because the color of the stone was originally like a very rich kind of a tan beige marble and other stones that they used, now light bounces off it uh, on the outside. So it, like it's on, it's kind of like a, on a low hill, Chapra, and it just, the light comes in from all over, and it's just like a beacon. And then you go inside, and what was once very dark and dingy, and you say, oh, well, this is a solemn place to pray. No, that's not how it was meant to be. It was meant to have those stained glass windows throw technicolor light down onto these naves and apses with their great pillars, and they're all clean during the process of being clean. It's a whole new ball game. I don't like the metaphor, but I'll let it go. It's a miraculous experience. Okay, even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you certainly have made me want to go to France, I can tell you. And uh, my daughter and son-in-law uh, took a bicycle trip from Marseille up to maybe Paris. I don't remember where. But they stopped in a lot of these little t historic towns and visited wineries, things like that. And, and 
they raved about the countryside more than the cities. Uh, so you're right. France is a beautiful place. But uh, don't but uh, uh, as you well put, uh, John, not to discount uh, Paris. My wife and I uh, went there. I think at the end of a July during a Tour de France, and we barely knew what the Tour de France was, but it was in the years of Armstrong, and we were uh, uh, marooned. Uh, I guess near the the, the Louvre, uh, when all of a sudden all these bicycles filled the street and started whipping around, and they had these big uh, 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 billboards uh, uh, with uh, the leaders and so on and so forth. And we we were at the end of one of those Tour de France. But what we remember most about it, first of all, it was a very friendly city. We were told the French are very standoffish. They were all very nice to us, and. Well, and, and the gold leaf was uh, on many of the buildings had just recently been restored. So it was truly the city of lights. I mean, the, the blinding reflection of the sun again on all the gold leaf was uh, probably one of the things I remember the most about it. Yeah, and, and you, you mentioned the Louvre. Um, the last time I saw Paris, da, 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 um, I said, I got to get to the Louvre and I've got to get out to Versailles because I don't know when I'm going to again. And at that time, two years ago, just getting into those museums was very difficult. I mean, the lines were by the hundreds, if not thousands. And even if you got tickets in advance, now all you have to do is walk up to them and walk right in because they don't have the tourists they once did. And especially, I remember going to Versailles, I would say 60 to 70 percent of the people online were Asian, Chinese, Japanese, uh, Koreans and so forth. I mean, just snaking uh, into into Versailles by the hundreds. Um, they're not there anymore. And so, if you ever never, if you ever neglected to go to these uh, great great museums uh, now anywhere in New York, now is the time to go, and you can have them all to yourself almost. Hmm. Now well, I have to go. Okay, and um, uh, since uh, uh, John M, you uh, uh, may very well have before we do our next uh, interviews with you, uh, have booked a, uh, a trip to France. It'd be interesting to find out whether or not uh, those uh, vaccination cards are good enough, or if you need a COVID test with it, or do you need a French, they have these uh, COVID passports of some, I've heard a bit about that. Uh, we don't do here in the States, but apparently many European countries are beginning to use electronic passports of some sort yeah. uh, for, for vaccination. So uh, maybe uh, we can get an update on that when you book your trip to Paris. I certainly will be happy to do so. Thank you. And if they quarantine me in France for 14 days, I will shrug and say, so oh, what? So, you say, c'est la vie. Right? C'est la vie. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.